Hi guys and welcome to today's video. I'm going to be discussing with you today the best photography apps to improve your photography. About a year ago I decided to start using these apps myself and it started well but then I realized I needed pretty much an app for everything and then I had about 10 or 15 apps on my phone and it was starting to get really complex. Fast forward to about two months ago, just like fast forwarding to the past, and I now have a grand total of four apps on my phone which manage everything that I need in my landscape photography. I decided to dig deeper into this and find a host of apps which could take care of all my photography needs. Rather than having 10 or 15 apps, I want to keep it nice and simple because that's the whole reason that I started using apps in the first place. Now before we jump into the good stuff and I share all of this information with you, please hit that subscribe button and most importantly, hit the notification bell. If you don't hit that, then YouTube are not gonna notify you of the new reviews, tips, and vlogs that I have every week on this channel. Okay, let's find out what number one is. The first app to make this list is Photopills. You may have already heard of this app. It's a great app and it's so popular now. But if you haven't, you gotta check it out. It's gonna improve your photography, I guarantee it. The reason it's so good is because it offers everything in one app. I mean, you can pretty much do everything you can think of in this one app. You can plan your sunrises, sunsets, moonrises, moonsets, astrophotography, time lapses, everything. And you've got a whole host of tools to back that up, including a time lapse calculator, hyperfocal length, and also an exposure calculator. And this is just touching the surface. There really is so much more to this app than I've just mentioned. Another great thing about this app is it's available not just for iOS now, it's also available for Android. Okay, so let me show you a few things on this app. Now, as we jump into this, I've got to explain to you that this is not a tutorial, so I'm not going to be going into depth about each area of this. The great thing is the app developers have actually created tutorials that you can learn from, and they're actually encompassed in the app themselves. Okay, so let's click into the PhotoPills app to start with. Just click there, and then you can see that you've got three sections at the top, like that. If we start in my stuff, this is about planning points of interest and also planning plans. Uh, this means that you can send a plan to another photographer of say a location that you've looked at and you like and you can send this idea to them, you can discuss it and you can plan meeting up. You've also got points of interest. Now there's some already saved in here but you can add your own as well. So if there's an area that you want to check out, you can add that as a point of interest and it's saved which means that you can go there and visit another time. Most of your time is going to be spent in the pill section and this is where the app really comes to life. You've got all these different areas. You've got sun, moon, exposure. You've got depth of field table, hyperfocal length table. You've got subject distance, you've got star trials. In fact, look at this, I found this really cool. This plans out all your star trials for you. Now, all you have to do is turn this around to, to show kind of how you want the star trials to look and then it's going to give you the time or the top. Watch as I turn it around and it plans the time for you. You've also got time lapse feature here and a timer. You really have got everything that you need. Now a lot of time will also be spent in the planner app. I'm not going to go into detail about this, but you can plan your sunrises, sunsets and certain areas that you want to visit. You can see how the sun's going to lay on the land, which is also really helpful for getting that really nice light in certain areas. Yeah, it's just absolutely fantastic. So let's click out of Planner, and then finally you can jump into Academy. You can go into a user guide here, and you can also go into the video tutorials that I mentioned earlier. So if you click on there, this is gonna give you a whole host of tutorials, which is gonna help you immensely uh, if you want to learn how to use this app to its best. So you've got all them there. Okay. So that is Photopills. That's the first app on my list, and it's the app that I would highly recommend that you guys check out over any other app. The next app to make my list is an app called Tides Near Me. This is the only thing, surprisingly, not to get on to the Photopills app. For some strange reason, they didn't think about seascapes. Or at least I don't think they did, and I apologize to the app makers if it's just something I haven't noticed while I've been using it. But Tides Near Me is a great strip back app completely the opposite of photo pills. It's so simple to use and you can just click on and find out the times of the tides 
when the tide's high and when the tide's low. And this is gonna help you when you're planning around a nice seascape. So let's have a quick look at that. Okay, so tide's near me. This is how simple this app is. You choose your country, and then you can choose nearby tides, or you can choose recent tides, which I've looked at. So I checked out Truro recently, and then it shows you the high tide, which was the last high tide, three hours ago. And then it shows you the next tide, which is low, which is at six o'clock. This is really gonna help you just plan seascapes. I love capturing seascapes, nice long exposure photography. And this app tells me all the information I need, simply, and it's to the point. So this is the reason this app made my list and it's number two. Now one of the things that you need to plan around if you're a landscape photographer, especially, is the weather. You need to know what the weather's doing or at least what it might be doing, especially if you live in the United Kingdom, because you don't really know what the weather's ever gonna do. Not even the weathermen do. But one of the best weather apps that I found, and it's free, which is more importantly, is Weather Radar Free. So let's just check this app out. If we click on it here, this app is gonna tell you everything you need to know about the weather, and I mean everything. It tells you the pressure, if it's high or low pressure. Now a lot of you aren't really gonna to be too bothered about that, but if you're a little bit more in depth in, with your weather calculations, you might wanna know this. But you've got a whole host of things you can choose from. You've got wind, rain, temperature, clouds and clouds is an important one as a landscape photographer so that's one I check quite often this tells you where the clouds are going to be how thick they're going to be and kind of you can plan your photography around this so you're going to know where you're going to get areas that are clear and areas which you're going to have a break in the cloud potentially you're going to get a bit of better weather you've also got other things like wind this is great so you can for instance go onto wind here and then this tells you the direction of the wind, where it's going, and also at the same time, it's giving you the high or low pressure as well. This app really covers all aspects of weather that I need covered. So if I'm visiting somewhere, I always check this app because it's very accurate, one, and two, it's got everything that I need in a weather app. The next apps on my list are two apps that you will be very familiar with, I'm sure but these are really great apps if you use them correctly. These two apps are Google Earth and Google Maps. Now, why do I use them? Because there's lots of other apps which could cover similar things like this. Well, they are brilliant for finding photography locations, especially if it's something that you kind of know about, but maybe you can't get to on foot. Let me explain. About 20 miles from me, there is some national forest. So this is a nice close drive. And I know that a lot of the trees in this national forest are new, so they've recently been planted. These don't really offer the best opportunities for photography, but there's also some clearings and some bigger areas which I wanted to potentially explore without actually going there. This is because I didn't want to spend a whole day walking around and maybe not finding anything. So I used Google Earth to have a bird's eye view and check out these areas. I was able to find this big lake and some really nice areas with hills, which offered some really beautiful photography. This was all down to Google Earth. I would have spent a lot of time and potentially came away with nothing if I would have gone out on foot. And then you can complement this with Google Maps because you can check the distance, these areas that you want to go and visit, and they both work together so well as a package. So this is the reason that Google Earth and Google Maps have made the last spot on my list and that I use on my phone regularly. Okay guys, so I hope that you enjoyed the selection of apps which I use and I find that really improve my photography. Now of course, there's only four apps that I mentioned here and you may have found some other apps which are as good or even better. And if that's the case, just add them in the comments section below because that's really gonna benefit everyone else which wants to learn from this video too. Your suggestions will help them find the best apps and then we're just a photography community helping each other. I hope you enjoyed today's video guys and if you haven't already and you're new here, hit subscribe and hit that notification bell. And whatever you do today, I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next video.